Hello there, whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you are, it's me, Addison, your favourite friendly furball who hangs around the internet and talks about all things nerdy. And as you know, during the month of August, I have been diving down the rabbit hole that is the MTG format, the Magic the Gathering format, Commander, or better known on the internet by its old name, Elder Dragon Highlander, EDH. And so this August, we have been bringing new content on the pod, many things completely centered around commander um we've talked to many people from the magic of the gathering space it's been a really great time and i've really enjoyed it so welcome again to command fest p-o-m-t as i've been calling it in my like little tongue-in-cheek way and today we are talking to someone who i didn't realize was such a big deal i was talking to him off camera before we started about the fact that somebody is like freaking out about me the fact that i was interviewing him today but i have today the unsummoned skull unsummoned skull himself coach j row coach j row you know him on the internet if you're in the mtg space so j row how about you introduce yourself tell us who you are what you do and where we can find you on the internet Oh, uh, thank you very much. I wasn't aware I was a big deal either, but it's always, always great to hear. Uh, <clears throat> so I am a streamer at twitch.tv backslash unsummoned skull. I have a YouTube channel, uh, bit.ly backslash unsummoned skull. Uh, I have the Quote of Arms podcast, which just uh, released its 50th episode. Well done. Uh, Congratulations on that, by the way. That's awesome. Thank you. That can be found at a, any of a very uh, few different places. Uh, <clears throat> including Anchor and most major podcast outlets. Uh, I am a writer, uh, weekly writer now for EDA Trek. Nice. That's that's so cool. That's awesome. Maybe that's where the big shot comes from. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad that you've got, you've got so much going on. Um, mm -hmm. Big shout out to Anchor, my guy as well. <laughs> like, loving, loving you. Oh, nice. Their platform to just get everything everywhere i used to use zencaster before but it wasn't um uh -huh. as uh open-ended so i didn't get everything everywhere but now with anchor beautiful on spotify apple Podcasts, all that doobly do um so uh -huh. yeah it's brilliant to have you on um and we're going to start with the usual which is our three questions that we've been asking everybody um Normally at the beginning, there was one podcast where I think we got to the end and I remembered and I was like, oh yeah, shit. <laughs> um, so um, our, um, our first question of the three is, who is your favourite commander? It can be whoever you're playing at the minute, the one that you always fall back to. It could be your spiciest. Uh, who's your favourite commander? So this will be interesting because I don't have a current build of him, but Varela the Hulk played. Ah, Really? Why is so, that? Because no matter what, you're going to see something weird, wacky, fun. It's it's a civic commander, uh, a generic, a green, and a blue for, I believe, a 1-4. You can pay a green and a blue tap it to um, double the counters on an artifact creature or I can't remember what the third type is, maybe a land. Mm -hmm. uh, something along those lines. Yeah, so, artifact creature on land, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Good. I, I have memorized it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a commander that I, I was actually using for my Simic Burn deck, which was the deck I was kind of known for when I started creating uh, or becoming a content creator. Uh, and I really only used him because I wanted a creature that could be a roadblock and there wasn't a good Simic Burn commander mm -hmm. uh, for what I was trying to do. Yeah, so that filled the <clears> role nicely. Yep, and then I, I would put in a, I put in a couple of other cards just because they happen to work with them. That deck has since uh, been not necessarily formally scrapped. It it basically it died so other decks could run. It, it walked so other decks could run. <laughs> it walked so other decks could run. I like that. Um, <laughs> that seems to be. Uh, I was uh, one of my friends and I were were talking about the fact that that seems to be the uh, thing for most Merfolk decks for some reason, like Merfolk Simic decks. Uh, usually like your starting point for Simic and then they just get blown mm -hmm. up to make room for crazy Simic things like uh, usually cloning, which is usually the, the main one for um, uh, Simic at the minute after the Strixhaven precon. Yeah, in this case, uh, so the deck was designed around, since I'm Unsummoned Skull, mm -hmm. using Unsummon effects to turn into a win con. Yeah. So 
the deck was so the major combination the deck was built around was uh, evacuation followed by Stormseeker. Yeah, so you could just get everything off the board. I see you. I see you. Um, and then I, hit him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So our second question is: Is there a commander that you're um, that you worry about if you see it in the pod, for example? Me and my boy Krenko have a uh, have a very toxic relationship. I'm not a big fan of Krenko, um, especially the newest edition. Uh, Street Kingpin's okay. It's the one that just taps and then you suddenly like look away. You're like, oh, I'm going to read this card before I play it. And then so your opponent's like, I'm swinging at you with 30 goblins. I'm like, where did you guys come from? Um, have you got any commanders where you're a bit like, ugh? So... I actually wrote an article about this guy at the beginning of the year. It's my, my first article of of this uh, calendar year mm-hmm. was about Gaddic Teague. But it was interesting because uh, <clears throat> I don't want to harbor those kinds of emotions towards anyone or anything. So the article itself was about celebrating Gaddic Teague and writing about what it does well and how to build around it in a way that is proactive rather than just limiting what the table can do. Yeah. Gaddick Teague is kind of my antithesis uh, because I like the big splashy spells and Gaddick Teague says, yeah, no. Yeah. It's literally just the, I'm reading the effects now. I've been doing this with everybody when they've said things because like some of them said cards that I know really well and others I'm like, Mm -hmm. and Gaddock Teague's one, I'm like, I've never heard of this. It's like, yeah, non-creature spells with converted mana cost cost four or greater just can't be cast. But what? And non-creature spells with X in their mana cost can't be cast either. It's just like, okay, (laughs) thanks. So transitioning to what we're going to talk about in 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 a minute... I have an Earthquake Tribal deck. Mm-hmm. Basically, every Earthquake effect jam in, jammed in there was, was how the deck was originally conceived. Mm-hmm. I have a Roshin Meanderer Hydra deck. So Roshin taps for four, uh, but can only be used on X spells. Yeah. There's spells, that, with spells, with an, with spells or abilities with an X. So I have two decks that just straight fold to Gaddick T being out. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, uh, brilliant. Awesome. No, that that sounds awful. And then <clears throat> our third question before we, like you say, go into our tribals is um, what is your dream commander deck to build? And if you've built it, what is it and why is that the, the one? Um, I mean, here's the thing. I would never say that I will ever really be done because... I just love building decks. Mm-hmm. It, it's a, I'll just, it's a calming activity to me. Uh, I have been diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah. And so I need to have a project. Otherwise, I'm going to obsess about something. Yeah. You need to <clears throat> like build something. Uh, yeah. I get you. Mm-hmm. I get you. So I need to have something that I'm working on at all times. So I the, the short answer would be the next one. <laughs> yeah. But if I'm going to a deck that I'm particularly proud of, it's going to be decks that I wasn't intending to make, mm-hmm. but that were made out of scrap parts. So one of those decks would be uh, Furkraj, um, a blue-red commander that goads creatures. This was a deck where I intended to make a Tamer deck that uh, gave everybody creatures. Uh, I wound up making a blue-green version with Gormaldrak. That was the one I intended to make. And as most of the cards I intended to put into it. Furkraj was made out of the scraps. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, another deck like that was the Earthquake deck with uh, Jawari, the Earth of Flame as the commander, where I got a bunch of cards together because I knew that I wanted to build a Roshin Meander. Yeah. Um, because that's one of the cards I've been... Uh, I love that card since it originally came out in Shadowmoor, which was one of the first sets where I was I was competitive. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to make that card work for a long time. Mm. So I wound up getting enough cards where I could just, out of the scraps, build a second deck. 
Wow. Perhaps the coolest of them, though, is Grothama, which I, I made uh, a little while ago. <clears throat> Grothama wasn't actually made out of the scraps of a particular deck. Mm-hmm. It was just made out of me recognizing a bunch of cards that work together. Like, if I have Grothama out and then I cast Rishkar's Expertise into Momentous Fall, I draw 20 cards. Mm. That's, that's... <laughs> and then play a... Yeah. And that's and that's uh, that's amazing to think about when you when you put it like you do where you found that by accident if you, if if you yep. like like if you read the subtext it's kind of mm-hmm. like I realised that these work together so I put them next to each other at one point because I was sorting out cards or bulk or something and then mm-hmm. realised oh shit that works <laughs> like yeah one of the one of the things or the main synergies in the deck that I realised worked but I I didn't like. I, I had a, a random storm seeker. I, I don't remember what it was originally from, but I had one in a pile of cards that I found, and I was, I think I had Grothama in a pile of recent cuts from a deck. Yeah. And I realized if the opponent pops Grothama and draws a bunch of cards, I can storm seeker them right after. This is true. Like that would that would hurt. That would hurt. Like <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you'd 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 just be in you'd be in a great position to just capitalise on when them thinking that they've done well mm-hmm. and then Yep. Nope. <laughs> Enjoy. And people play cards like Great Henge when they go wide. But you don't have to. You just need one big creature. Mm. So if I have Grothama out, all of a sudden Great Henge costs two. Mm-hmm. And now I have a really, really good uh, ramp card that also gains life, so that eventually when I get all of my forests out of the deck, mm-hmm. I can hurricane for a lot and still be at a high life total. Yes, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about the, these some of these combos. I'm like, oof. This action. is Motto Green Burn. Yeah, you've you've <laughs> and and it's like, hang hang on, how? Because I'm also remembering like those colors, like you just said. That's that's mono green burn. That's not a. That <laughs> yeah. shouldn't be a thing. That shouldn't exist. And like the fact you're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna use green henge. Like and you're like, oh that's an expensive card. That's a card that is like a usually like one of the main engines for a lot of people. Like that token, like you say, going wide, so mm-hmm. creating non-token creatures and making tokens. So they, and then you're just there like, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna bust it out for one card i'm like what the, like this is insane this is this is like so so interesting uh so mm-hmm. hopefully we can get more into that when we uh look into our topic for today so our topic for today is tribal decks and the tribal build formula so we're going to be talking about what is a tribal deck and how do we build them and how do we make them successful etc etc so I think, J-Ro, the first thing we need to do is we need to define what a tribal deck is. So, J-Ro, can you do that for me as the, now that I realise it, EDH rec published uh, journalist? (laughs) What's a tribal deck for me, my friend? Okay. Well, it's interesting because tribal has different ways of being interpreted by different people. But usually 20 cards of that tribe is what it is kind of the minimum but i mean there are exceptions to that and it kind of depends on how you build Mm -hmm. Uh, because the formula that i usually use when i build is 30 basic lands 10 non-basic lands uh, and then 10 ramp spells 10 or ramp or fixing 10 draw or advantage 10 spot removal, 10 mass, re- 10 multi removal, I would say, not mass removal necessarily. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> uh, it's usually about 20 general synergy or win cons. Yeah. And the tendency is just to say, okay, I'm going, if I'm making a tribal deck, I'm just going to jam 20 of that tribe in there. Mm-hmm. the key to making a good tribal deck or one that fits properly 
is to find members of the tribe that also do those jobs. Yeah. Also, like, fill in those, <clears throat> those roles of, like, have I got a member of this tribe who does removal, who does ramp, who does um, buff, or what's it? It's not called buffing. What's it called? When you when you pu- pump, that's the one. It pumps mm-hmm. things up. There we go. Um, so before we go into this then, because uh, I've, I've realised we've also not defined what a tribe is. So what do we mean by a tribe? Because, like... Some people are going to turn around and and make the joke that my my deck is board right wipe tribal, like and board wipe okay. isn't a tribe. So what what is meant by a tribe? Okay. So tribe is also a term that in the vernacular is going through a bit of an issue, mm-hmm. uh, because it has the negative implications with regards to indigenous persons. Yeah. So usually when I'm describing it, I'll say creature type, archetype, or synergy. Yeah. So and that's how I refer to it on my quote of arms podcast. Yeah, so it's like um so tribal is something like um your you might have elves. Elves might be the main creature archetype that you have. Or you might have mm-hmm. elementals or something like that. It's usually on the card somewhere. Or and then mm-hmm. like you say with synergies, like um technically like there are there are synergies where you can pump up burn and stuff like that would do a lot of burn damage uh sometimes are referred to like colloquially like i said that almost joking mm-hmm. board wipe tribal is because there's so many cards in that synergy that you can make something out of just that mechanic or that gimmick sort of thing um cuz mm-hmm. uh i've realized that um uh, one of my favourite tribal decks that I've seen on on Moxfield is uh, Shapeshifter. I'm like, oh, that looks like it could be trolly as hell. <laughs> like that yeah. looks like it'd be. Funny. And there's some people who say, oh, it's everything tribal, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. so tribal decks are using a key archetype or a key strategy or something, and then like we're going to look at how you build those. So you. One thing I did notice about your formula, and I don't know, you've you said that you're you teach like um, statistics. statistics. Yeah, I was going to say statistics, or I was I was going to say economics. I'm like I'm sh- not sure it's that one. Um, but um, <laughs> I, I teach world history, and I teach uh, at the high school level. Mm-hmm. I teach uh, education and statistics at the college level. Fair enough. Well, that's that's impressive. Those are three okay. very very impressive subjects. Um, my um, my thing is like when we and uh, John from Manadork were talking about how you construct decks, he broke it into um, the same similar sort of categories uh, that uh-huh. you did, but and we talked about how like most people who build decks have that I, I that paradigm of like land base <laughs> removal. Um, creatures and he described it as eating your mtg veggies like you have to because the meat and potatoes or like the dessert uh, i think was what he said of of magic the gathering is having those Mm -hmm. big monsters to throw at people but actually if you want to do that you've got to eat your veggies first and prepare and and eat the and do the things that you need to do Mm -hmm. to get there um, would you agree with that summation that it's it's like that? Um, I would agree, but I would also say you need to make sure that all the elements fit on the same plate. Yeah. Um, I have been a chef before, so I, I do have some experience with that too. It's like, what haven't I done, right? Uh, but <clears throat> for example, in some Italian restaurants, they might give you a, a small side of spaghetti and, and marinara sauce, yeah, which makes sense with what they're serving, like a steak. Um, <clears throat> because it's something that offers a starch. It's something that is somewhat light and uh, sweet to counteract the savory and salty. Mm-hmm. So it still fits with everything that you're doing. Yeah, and it's the same um, deck building as well, I guess. Like Everything needs to fit mm-hmm. together. Yeah, uh, in order to make sure that all the pieces are moving in the same direction. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that means that you need to shift your definition of certain types of cards mm-hmm. uh like 
when I say that uh, need so many multi-removal cards. Yeah. Unless you're capitalizing on things dying, there are enough aristocrat strategies out there that you might not want to kill everything. Yeah. Leaving some stuff alive <clears throat> is, 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 is sometimes the better move. Like... So there are some decks where I would say you might rather have Reckless Spite than have uh, Damnation. Mm -hmm. Reckless Spite kills two creatures, I think you lose five life, as mm -hmm. opposed to four mana kill everything. Yeah. But at least this way, if you're not taking advantage of everything dying, mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily want everything to die because it could hurt you, Yeah. then maybe you just need to kill specific things. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, another way that you can interpret it is, okay, uh, I'm playing a tribal deck. I don't want my stuff to die, and I don't necessarily want everybody else's stuff to die either. Mm -hmm. So maybe I should be playing anti-board wipe cards. Yeah. Like Rap and Vigor. And that's, that way that's still I a removal just... spell, isn't it? Sorry, that's, yeah. that's still a removal spell because you're removing that board wipe from the board. Like, Well... Yes, but I'm only saving my own stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm using someone else's board wipe as my board wipe. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, yeah. I'm taking this reciprocal effect and making it not reciprocal is precisely why that person was playing it in their deck to begin with. But if I'm playing this card, uh, the, the Wrap and Vigor, to hedge against their card, mm -hmm. then I have made it so that their board wipe didn't so that their board wipe hit at least two other players, and I didn't have to play it myself and and make myself open to it. I think the best version of that I've ever seen is um, there's a black is damnation the black one and Armageddon the white one, like yes, yes. so uh, Armageddon uh, destroys all lands, so Wrath of the God would be the Wrath white of the God, one. yeah. Sorry, um, I, I was going to talk about like. Uh, Armageddon as well, but one of the, f the funniest things I ever saw was somebody played uh, Veil of Summer on, mm -hmm. on obviously as somebody played uh, Damnation, and it gives you protection from black if they're casting a black spell. If they've cast a black spell, so like he like for a one mana card, he managed to survive the whole of like a board wipe, and I was like, oh, that's funny, and like they kind um, of that would work if it was like pestilence, <laughs> would it? I thought I would have thought it would um it would work against that as well. Cause it could Damnation, from uh, you know, yeah, that doesn't matter though. It's not targeting or oh, okay. dealing damage. Um, Protection has to do with targeting or dealing damage. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Got you. Then so I'll... yeah, then it, that it would was hit everybody. Wrong. That was played wrong in the game. Yeah, I watch. I, we should um, the judge. Sudden spoiling would work that way, I believe, because it's creatures target player controls become zero two. Yeah. So if it's you get protection from black. Yeah. Then that would work as well. Per yeah, it's like uh, permanent you control get protection from black. I think. Yep. Uh, but if it's not targeting or um, yeah, if it's not targeting or doing damage, it doesn't mm. count. Yeah. It's like and if something says damage can't be prevented, that still won't work. Yeah. So yeah, no. So damage can't be prevented. Yeah. Oh. Well, we should have called. They, they should have called the judge over that. I, okay. I, I, I'm like, I, I always thought that was the coolest play ever as well, because like you just got to sit there and watch as somebody was like, oh mm -hmm. my god, they've still got things on the board. And I think you're right in the fact that, um, that does. You have to think about those things when when building a deck. Like, um, what are because do you think and this is my one of my questions to you before we go into the specific tribal thing do you think because everybody builds in that kind of paradigm of like land uh removal uh this that and the other um do you think that it it becomes predictable what people are going to have in their deck if you know the cards well enough um yes and no uh, I think that certain effects can wind up being um, a little, little easier to predict. Like, if somebody's playing red and white, they're probably playing Sun Forger, which means they probably have Teferi's Protection to get. Yeah. So they... You can start to create those. That doesn't mean it's universally going to be true, because not everybody can afford it. Yeah. Not everybody wants to play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... 
Yeah. Uh, but I can say I have a... Uh, <clears throat> so I have an Elephant Tribal deck that mm -hmm. doesn't play any board wipes. It plays Unbreakable Formation. It plays, like, Make a Stand. It plays, I think, Rootborn Defenses, cards like that that give it that give my creatures indestructible. Uh, plays Join Shields. Uh, on top of all creatures you control, they gain Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. Mm -hmm. So just a bunch of cards to, out of nowhere, mess with board wipes <clears throat> and it has 10 of those effects it doesn't have a single board wipe of its own because it doesn't need them actually um the, the only one that's close would be terastodon which happens to be an elephant yeah right but that's 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 not like destroy everything well it is it, but i get what you're saying like it's not 100 percent the same um so, when you think about the, the deck building formula and stuff, does it actually change that much if you're specifically aiming to build a certain tribe? Like, does it actually... Do you have to, like, consider, like, the balance of card numbers and stuff like that? Or does it r roughly stay the same? Um, it depends on how um, dependent you are on having members of the tribe out. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, <clears throat> but one of the things you can do when you're playing a deck like that is you can start to cut some of some effects or just change what they look like. Mm. Um, sometimes you do that to reduce the power level. Uh, sometimes you do that just to try to get more flavor out of it. Yeah. Uh, for example, I don't have any board wipes in my Jin Tribal deck. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue-Red Jin Tribal. Uh, because... Uh, my spot removal is either things to put... Uh, so cards that put creatures to sleep, because Jin supposedly do that. Mm -hmm. They put them into... They put things to sleep. And then there are also um, <clears throat> polymorph effects. Mm -hmm. Because genies, you grant the wish, mm -hmm. but <laughs> you might not always like what you get. Yeah, and that's that's like a really clever like almost like law based like or mm -hmm. thing for the tribal as well cuz like that that's that's almost a uh, an entire entire different thing by itself thinking of like the flavor of the of the creatures that you're you're playing uh, but although now that I come to think of it if we look at like how the tribes work a lot of them play <laughs> And feel like you'd expect that tribe to feel. So, for example, my werewolves are about being together and attacking together. Especially now that you have Tovala as a as a commander option. Like, I want as many werewolves as I can on the but on the field, and then I want to swing out because werewolves are ferocious and stuff. And actually, when you think about it, a lot of the Jin cards I have are about like remove this from the send this back to the opponent's hand etc etc like mm -hmm. give the give it give them give it back or save you in a in a in a pinch like so yeah i, I can see that that's really interesting when you think about it like that and Jin tribal that's interesting who's the commander for that uh i will have to get that oh sure sure cool all right Tribal Virgin is Uvilda. Uvilda. Uh, Uvilda, Dean of Perfection. Uh, uh, yeah. The reason why it can be a blue red. Uh, so the reason why it's the commander is because uh, it can be. It's its identity is considered blue red, even though it only has blue pips. Uh, but the backside is uh, the other uh, guy. Sorry, Dean yeah. of Expression, who is an Efreet, So I'm never actually playing that part. Uh, and it, depending on how how you how you interpret uh, what you call it as well, um, mythology as well, they're kind of similar. They're like distant cousins, but understood. But I'm I'm, it's Jin tribal. I'm not playing in a free. No, no, that's 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 the bottom line. Um, yeah, and a free would be in the front. Ah. <laughs> Ha ha ha! You need to do that uh, thing where you slap something and walk off, like in the meme. Ha 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 ha! Um, so, um, those are two very interesting tribes that you've mentioned. You've mentioned Jin and 
elephants. Are they particularly mm-hmm. well supported tribes, or have you had to like pull um, some special things out to make it so they're viable? Well, I mean, I've also mentioned I think earthquakes. Oh, earthquakes! Uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I have some uh, some ones that are more. Uh, I wouldn't say viable, but more supported. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the interesting ones is my dragon deck. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> my dragon deck is helmed by Neheb, who is not actually a dragon. Mm-hmm. It's um, designed actually off of a, um, a a former world championship deck that was one of the first ones I saw um, coverage, uh, pro tour coverage of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was run by Pat Shapin and Gabriel Nassif at, I think it was 2006 Worlds. Oh, wow. um, it, the deck was called Gassy Knoll, mm-hmm. uh, which I thought was hilarious. Um, but it was a storm deck, uh, a mono red storm deck that tried to get, like, <clears throat> tried to burn, 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 and then um, also ramp in. To um, Dragonstorm, yeah, and then get a bunch of Bulgar and Hellkites out to finish. And it was a nasty deck. So the way that I sort of shifted that into Commander was, I put the dragons in. Uh, I, I only so I I don't have any dragons in there just to be dragons. All of the dragons are doing a job, like Dragon Mage is a form of card draw. Yeah. Yeah. When it connects with somebody, everybody does a. Everybody wheels. Uh, but there is a Wheel of Fortune where they discard their hand, draw seven. So it's a form of card draw, but it's also something that I can get off of Dragonstorm or more likely off of Dragon's Approach. Oh. So you're. you're you have. How many Dragon's Approaches do you have in the. Is it 20. Like, uh, so so you... I have 20. Gen- uh, so I have 20 slots that I usually allocate for general win cons or synergies. So yeah. I put all of them into dragon's approaches. Because it is a win con, because it- you get so many in your uh, graveyard, you can exile them to summon one of your dragons from anywhere, right? It- not mm-hmm. from the graveyard, not from the bin, I think. Um, um, from the library, I believe. So yeah, yeah. I can get a. So I'll-, I'll wind up getting card draw, board wipe, something. Yeah. And that's... But also the approaches fuel the heb, giving me lots of mana in case I draw any of them. Yeah, so you can throw them straight down, even if you draw them anyway, because the hebs give like, <laughs> like that's that's, oh my god, I admittedly I saw somebody use a dragon's approach deck on game night, so I don't did they have the heb? I don't think it was their commander. I think they had it though. I think they used him because he's the possibly. He's uh, he has afflict on him, doesn't he? He's the one with the afflict keyword. Um, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah, he. I think that. But that, so that's a really interesting. So, what do we mean by like tribal support then? <laughs> like, what is tribal support, and how is how is that effective? Because, like, a lot of people might just go, "Well, tribal support is decks or cards themed around the same thing," but I don't think that's a hundred percent true. Well, there are cards that um, help out tribal decks that are not themselves part of any specific tribe. Uh, for example, um, think, yeah, Patriarch's Bidding yeah. is really good for, for zombies. Mm-hmm. You probably play it in the majority of zombie decks. Uh, it's not as good other places. No. So, so it's just it is gen support when we talk about tribal support. It's genuinely things that would just help that particular archetype of card to succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be official though. Uh, no. and sometimes it is. Uh, like I blades ending is. Uh, I think that's minus two minus two to each non elf. Yeah. And uh, and it can be used. To, um, I've seen people use I blades ending on. Um, you know, uh, what's the witch called? The witch Sedgemore witch, the one that can like produce lots of like those um, things with magecraft. A lot of um, a lot of uh, 
worms pests, pests yeah that's the one pests and then they've literally just given themselves like tons of life because they've got loads of those out and then they've just eye blights thinged and then they and you find out that they're actually using life as a resource and you're like oh my god no not like this <laughs> <laughs> because they've now got 50 life to play with on top of everything else they're like uh, uh manner and everything else it's it's an insane uh thing how people can find that support in cards that you wouldn't expect it to be in a bit like how you said like sometimes deck building is really interesting when it kind of happens by accident um are there any tribes that you think need more support or that or have too much support actually let's tackle that one at a time so are there any tribes that you think need more support i mean lots of them but i also think that you can get support by um by just building around them the, in a way that makes sense. Mm-hmm. In particular, though, the one that frustrates me in terms of doesn't not having enough support is dogs. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Like you'd think, especially with now that we've got Ginny yeah. Faye, um, that dogs would have a lot more prevalence, but they really don't. Like, well, Ginny Faye and Rin and Sari both really, really frustrate me. Why is that? Because they include both cats and dogs. In terms of actual dog commanders, like let's say you're a dog person, you don't like cats. You you don't want to have to deal with cats at all, necessarily. You just want a dog deck because you like dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, There is Isamaru. Mm -hmm. You can have Paco alone. And I guess you can go alone with the new Yoshimaru, I think. Mm-hmm. So you have a partnership that you can't complete, yeah. another partnership you can't complete, and you have a one mana that dog that doesn't have any abilities. Uh, that those aren't great options. If you want to go in, in all in either in green, red, or white. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Cu- I'm currently just. I'm looking at the gatherer to see how many dogs they've got, and on on the search for dogs in mm-hmm. in the gatherer thing, there's only twenty three cards, like for the whole of Magic. Mm-hmm. And that's like, and that's including uh, things like dogged detective. So it's got like dog in the name, like dogged. Right? Yeah, I would wonder if that includes Errata. Yeah, I think I think the Gavra, like it's the official Wizards one. I think that it does include Irata as well. I think mm-hmm. it changes it because um, there's a couple of cards that I've got that um, have been changed vi- uh, in reprint, like even recently. And yeah, there are 99 dogs. Oh, why am I only saying 23 then? Uh, there were 99 as of Midnight Hunt. Okay, let's have a look at those. Let's have a look at what the pota- I'm I'm interested in this now. Let's go. So I can see if I can send this to you. TG. Yeah, there we go. Why is it lying to me? Companion. All right, there sending this to you now. Um. <clears throat> okay. So I just sent you the creature type list. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Smiley Lich. Uh, so yeah, we go down to dog. Ninety-nine. There are twenty-eight in white. There are, I believe, um, is it going there? Yep, four in blue. Uh, <clears throat> Seventeen in uh, black. Mm. Twenty-nine in red, and then twenty-one in green. Mm. And there are six colorless. <clears throat> I th- oh yeah, I think the card database needs um needs work then because I'm I've I've still only got twenty two and I've like made sure all the things like in in total like uh, like and it just says dog it, creature dog summon mm-hmm. hounds like so hound yeah. counts as well. Conoros is another one that that one is black and white. Yeah, but I, I, admittedly, I'm looking through all these ones that I've got on here and uh they are very much like dog. Dogs are in white, by the looks of things, mm-hmm. um, mainly, and like that does seem like a very weird choice for uh, wizards to make, not to support that when dogs are supposed to be man's best friend, and like 
Yeah, um, I have been working to try to build dog decks. My first uh, podcast episode is about a green-red dog deck that I've since taken apart. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I, I used to have a black-and-white Kunoros deck uh, that was uh, designed around Exile, and actually one using the... Um, there's a secret layer dogs mm-hmm. that had rest in peace with a dog, uh, so with, with the dog as the thing resting peacefully. Yeah, uh, which is kind of sad, but <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say that's uh, that's dark. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the game winning or the way that it, that it was set up to win was uh, rest in peace plus helm of obedience. Because how hilarious is it for a dog to be making the table obedient? <laughs> That's <is> pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty pretty funny. Yeah, that, that one doesn't exist anymore either. I do have a dog deck though. Um, my dog, my current dog deck is Isamaru with a bunch of uh, anti mass removal effects. And the idea of the deck is Isamara just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back, so I call the deck Dog of Determination. Yeah. That's, that's pretty... I, I love decks with, like, punny names. They're, like, the best thing. They make, they mm-hmm. make me smile. Um, um, my werewolf deck on... Uh, no, my dragon's deck. My dragon historic brawl deck on... Um, on arena is called all dragon no dungeons um because of the fact that it's all about like it's miriam uh sentinel worm and like cloning dragons but it, none of them venture into the dungeon um and then uh i think uh i feel a bad mo- i feel a bad full moon rising is my uh is going to be the name of my werewolf commander deck when i feel it when i finish it um so yeah uh-huh. the- Moon rising. I, I, it's quite funny because um, I have two like 60 card decks for obviously modern and standard play and one is werewolves before the day and night mechanic was um, so they're just called uh, they're just called grey wolves and then that, that deck's called grey wolves and then because of the day and night mechanic the other one is called Kid Cuddy Werewolves because of the day and night song, like day and yeah. night. <laughs> like so, Kid Cuddy Werewolves is my <laughs> is my other one. Um, so dogs is our, is is your like frustrating like why is there not enough support for this tribe? Is there a tribe that your tribe that you're sick of seeing support being given to? Is there a tribe that frustrates you because they have too much support? I mean, if I'm going with the EDH Trek stuff, uh, dragons. <laughs> Because dragons. like, oh. no dragons, dragons. Dragons, sorry. Because they've been at the top of the power list, and right now my series is about power is about a popularity rankings. Uh, oh, I, my, uh, my personal one's angels. Like, I think. Oh come else... on, Hoth, Hoth needs it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, but like angels get so much for so little. I'm like they're like this is not fair. Like like they've got like the G- Gadia like comes in for what two three and then just does ridiculous things <laughs> like and yeah. then you you cr- cast right is it righteous valkyrie and he's just like oh yeah by the way everything now has plus two two and flying enjoy you're like the fuck is this like what what mm-hmm. <laughs> like and it's like oh yeah by the way there's loads of just protection angel protection spells as well you're like i'm just okay fine okay i lose okay i get it <laughs> like um, I get really frustrated with angels, both on MTG Arena and when speaking to my friends about it on like, um, and watching it on uh, on content as well. I'm just like, why? Why do these guys have so much? Like, mm-hmm. uh, but dragons is also, I think you're right, another one where you're a bit like, whoa, you guys have a lot yeah. going on. <laughs> it, it, um, the, I'm just saying that out of like the recency bias. But the the tribes that I really think have too much uh, support, and I I just dislike seeing them at this point, are elves. I really. It, it just uh, I mean, we make more mana to make more elves, which draws us cards, which does really nothing in the grand scheme of things, besides load up the board, and then they get mad if somebody wipes the board that they just way overcommitted to. Yeah. 
that's a good point. Like, there is only really one way to win with elves. Like, everybody's like, well, can't you argue argue the same for goblins? I'm like, well, not really, because goblins have, like, cool little things like sacrificing goblins. Like, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of goblins to sacrifice, whereas elves want you on the board forever. And goblin players don't get mad when you wipe their board because they were intending for that to happen anyways. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, like, if someone's got... So, for example, Dwenin as their commander, mm-hmm. and as soon as like you take Dwenin off the board, they're like, "Oh no!" Like, <laughs> how dare you touch my command? Yeah, like, uh, dude, I'm playing Volo as a commander here. The minute he gets on the board, you guys all like almost like sniper dot him, like, <laughs> and like he's mm-hmm. gone before I even like he hits the board, and then it's so, like, oh, is it your end step? I cast this. Oh fuck's sake! <laughs> He's like casting twin. He's like costing twenty before turn five because I keep trying to get him out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I... so that, that's the thing. Uh, I don't care as much about the things that are played. I care about the reactions people make to other people finding counter strategies. Yeah, and when the dominant reaction is to whine and complain and argue then that's just not fun to me that makes sense so if you're making creatures and you're not attacking with them then you're just basically taunting the table at that point i can see that because like you're just like hey look at everything i've got like yeah look at everything i got i'm not going to advance the game and start and start hitting people uh and i also don't want you to do anything about what i'm doing because if you do, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna start a tantrum. I am playing magic by myself in the corner. <laughs> Pretty much yeah. is like I'm in I'm in the turn order, but I'm not actually in this game. <laughs> I just want to make elves and <laughs> have you leave me alone, and then eventually I'll drop a crater hoof. Yeah, that is that is quite interesting. Quite an interesting answer as well, because. Like obviously, elves are one of like the the staple fantasy races, and it's one of the oldest uh, tribes really in in magic. And like, <laughs> so you'd think like, ah, oh, yeah, they're they're much beloved. Like most people, are like yeah, I love my elf deck. Like I've got tw- two Dwenins, and but I I have no, uh, and I think kind of the same reason that you've said. Like I have no interest in playing him as a commander. I have no interest in playing him. Like, I could have a deck with two in right here, right now, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. That's fine. I do have a little bit of bias as well, because one of the first decks that I played against when I was learning how to play was uh, I had a friend who had an elf deck and would just uh, go wide enough and then gain life with Wellwisher oh. to the point where it was where we could calculate and he was just gaining more than we could deal and nobody could afford, like, a damnation. I don't even think Damnation was printed at the time. Yeah, so it's just a bit like... It's, it's almost like an infinite loop without it being a loop. Like, uh, we're going to hit you, you're going to recover, and then what? Like, wh- what are mm-hmm. we going to do? It's like all three of us together can deal maybe 150, 200 because our decks aren't really that strong. Mm-hmm. And he was he had like multiple Well-Wishers out. Um, as well as the insect that can untap a creature. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or untap an elf. So he's gaining, like, uh, three, four hundred a turn. Jesus, that's insane. Like, how wide did he go? Like, that's like. And how is he he, replicating? He wasn't doing anything to actually win the game. And the game has to end. I think a lot of people. A kind of like thing about Commander because of the fact they're like the game's gone for ages. I'm like, you say that, but like the game ends like in Commander, like it somebody decides like it's time to go home, <laughs> and then they do some, and they might not win when they make that decision. They may do something stupid and go, okay, this, the game's got to end now, and then so they do something, and then it just sets off the chain of events that causes mm-hmm. everybody to start f- like World War f- free and just go right we're going and that's and so having a player on elves where you kind of don't want to advance that or don't want to do that is kind of shitty i'm not gonna lie yeah um 
yeah i just i don't know like i my thing with angels is just like by the time you have the the ability to remove a lot of the like because somebody was i think uh liliana said like angels get um stall out really hard if you can stop them early enough but in most decks like i'm not going to lie by the time you have like the mana and everything to to deal with the angel deck it's already gone at, it's it's past that point like they're already creating 15 angel tokens a turn because of the fact they have like i don't know this creature here that creates tokens they have uh is it seat of the empty throne or whatever like sigil of the empty mm-hmm. throne like mm-hmm. it's just like yo here's 400 flying 4-4 four, four angel tokens because that's what i don't get as well why are angel tokens like 4-4 four, four and flying like whereas everything else is just like oh yeah here's a 2-2 two, two wolf here's a 1-1 one, one spider with reach i mean it has to be I mean, angels are a lot bigger than them and much more powerful like i, I can see that <laughs> like, um just it's kind of hard to tell whether they have vigilance or not, which can be an issue. Um, a lot of them have static effects, and you just have to remember what's out there. Mm. And spell table, that can be tricky, especially when you click on a creature and it turns into a bayou or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do I do love watching people use spell table. <laughs> and um, they click on a card thinking, oh, yeah, this will tell me what it does. And it's just like, that's definitely not what that card is. <laughs> that's that's something completely different um uh one one person was playing uh, lafro um so one person was playing lafro and the person tried to click on it on spell table on like the stream i was watching and it uh it came up as a uh, as a uh, uh, arcane signet and he was like that's definitely not what that is <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah yeah, so that was that was a funny little experience. I, I did like watching that stream where it's just like, yeah, no, this isn't working. Could you tell me? Like, you've got people holding it like up to their phone that they're using as the uh, spell table camera, um, like close up to get in focus. That's really funny. Um, yeah, so we've we've talked about tribal tribes. We think need more support. Tribes. We think I. I've not really looked at enough tribes to determine if one needs more support. Um, I think werewolves have enough support. They're my favourite tribe. Um, like, I think they have enough support. Um, they're just gruel stompy things. Like, and gruel stompy things have a lot of support. Like, I think early on when they were first made in like original Innistrad and stuff like that. It was diff- It was more difficult because we didn't have the day and night cycle. Although there was the trade-off that you could have human werewolves and transformed werewolves on this field at the same time, which was could be quite interesting. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I just think uh, I've not really got that much experience with a tribe that needs more support. Um, maybe like maybe birds, like maybe birds like i've not seen many like pure bird decks um even with the uh the donny from new capenna i've not seen like anything uh that's just pure birds um a bit like with your dogs i've not seen i've seen shapeshifters now i looked up for them because i was before this conversation i was like is there a shapeshifter tribal deck because that would be interesting and i found one and it was just as interesting as i thought it would be like, <laughs> like although how anybody can afford sakashima of, t- of the two faces is beyond me that is a that is a, as we say in the uk spenny card to have in your, in your deck list um and sakashima's apprentice as well um and they had like they they proved that they had all of them i'm like jesus this is this is insane um uh, but yeah like I think that um, my last question to you before we start like wrapping things up and is um, my my last question is probably um, one of the things I've noticed in Commander a lot more than like modern where I come where like modern 
is that deck building can tell you a lot about someone like how they build their deck and the way their deck works and the way they talk about their deck tells you a lot about them do you think that um that is also applicable to the tribe that they choose does does someone's choice of a tribe reflect like who they are as a person like could you look at somebody with an elf deck and go ah or is that just a a, a bad a, a bad uh like trauma response that you have or well, this is where i think that commander has a bit of an issue mm-hmm. because of how many cards are similar um how many tribes play out similarly you gotta ask yourself am i just making a worse something else mm-hmm. but also how many like i wouldn't say necessarily staples but Cards that are just generally played and are kind of crutches or hedges that people play. Um, I would say deck buildings become a little bit homogenized, including tribes. And it's kind of hard to evoke the flavor of the tribe and also to make that mesh with who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more who you are as a deck builder. Mm -hmm. And... For me, it's a, just a project. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily put myself into the characters. I know some people will say, okay, this is Commander, and I want to role play as this character. Some people will cosplay as one of their commanders. I don't get that much into it because I see it as more of a math problem. Yeah. Um,. So, to me, it's a little detached. I will say, I'm working on creating a format where you do get that feel. That roleplay game feel. But Commander, I don't think, is the format for that. Well, it's it's not even just in terms of like roleplay. I'm thinking more of, like, does, like, my gruel stompy boys match? Am I, am I someone who's, like, outgoing and, like, aggressive? That would if if you if I was to put my gruel stompy boys on the di- on the table, and be like, "Yo, this is what I'm playing." Would you go? Oh, this person's probably going to be obnoxious and loud and want to hit me in the face as much as possible. Or, no. Or because uh, um, sometimes, like in certain games, like some people have that. Whereas, I don't know. Like it is interesting to think about that that conundrum. But I can see what you're saying, and with how who you are and what you do. It makes sense that you would see deck build deck 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 definitely said deck <laughs> um, deck building in that way like mathematical and like your your even your thing is very specific your your ratios are very specific whereas when I've talked about it with mm-hmm. other people it's like just make sure you've included these things and rah, rah, rah. They've mm-hmm. never, whereas you're like you need this number this number this number and I think that's really well it's always ten uh, it's always in multiples of ten because that way you um, can say that you're going to get it in your first opening hand in three cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <clears throat> so I, I like to think about that, but uh, I am working on making a formula where you get the feeling of being that, a bad character. Mm-hmm. But I think a 100-card singleton format sort of detaches you a little bit especially when you start going into, like, trying to fill spots or putting cards in there that are just good. Like, what does Frozen Grip have to do with, say, Zakama? Mm. Has he ever been there? Do you have anything to do with Croza? Does he even understand what Split Second is? Or are you just playing it because it's a good instant that you can leave up mana for while Zakama's out? <clears throat> um, I see that. I see your point there. So you're looking at making either a formula or a format where, like, almost like a Vorthos format where it's about flavor and character. like. Kind of, yeah. So the format that I'm working on is uh, temporarily called Arsenal MTG. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the format that I'm going to, or the name that I'm going to use for it. Mm-hmm. So you have a legendary creature commander, and then you have a uh, colored artifact or 
uh, so a colored equipment or vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's their signature um, weapon or ride. <clears throat> uh, 60 card, uh, so minimum 60 card Highlander. You can have as many cards as you want. You can go 80 cards with a Yorion companion. You can go over 200 cards with Battle of Wits. <laughs> Interesting. But the idea is that <clears throat> you're going into battle as this character with this weapon or v or or vehicle. vehicle yeah. You don't actually have to cast anything else. You can just be that character going in with that weapon or vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> you can cast any other spells that you want to. Uh, <clears throat> and some uh, variants, you might pl uh, cast spells that could help other people if you're going up against a horde deck. So it feels like we're going together mm -hmm. uh, against uh, a shared opponent, which is always fun. Yeah. But even if we're not, you still get that feeling of being that character rather than playing a deck that's helmed by this creature who may or may not have anything to do with the rest of the deck. That's true. That's a, that's a good point. That's, that's a really good point. It sort of changes the way that you're viewing. Instead of I'm trying to build to 100, it's I'm trying to... It's, uh, I'm, well, I'm trying to decide if what goes in I'm, I'm... instead of what comes out. Yeah, I'm trying to decide what goes in and tell the right story with it as well. That's really that's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. I think um, I don't know if you watch them, but Tilarian Community College just released a um, a video. Well, I say just um, they yeah, released a video different uh, formats. Yeah, yeah, about the eight different formats. I think they mentioned something like that. Um, that was an old format that people used to play. Um, uh, Horde, I believe, yeah, was uh, yeah. may have been mentioned. Yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't actually see the thing, but Horde is was my favorite way to play Magic. Mm. I used to like um, I used to like two headed giant. That was my that was my because uh, that came... I've been doing two headed giant commander every other Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, I did that over the summer. I might bring that back. That um, but yeah, I, I I've been streaming that. Nice. I'll make sure to catch that next time. And with that mentioned, actually, your stream, let's start wrapping up. You've got places to be, uh, people to see, <laughs> lives to live. So, um, J Ray, thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, now that you, now that I know that you're a big deal, obviously, I'm gonna keep just saying this because of the fact that I find it really funny and your reactions were hilarious as well. <laughs> Um, but I do really, yeah. in all seriousness, though, I do really appreciate your time. You didn't have to do this. Absolutely. Like I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just learning something. And I mean, same. And I consider it to be a tremendous honor. Yeah, and um, yeah, just one thing I will say, and I keep harping on about in all my podcasts with you EDH people, is that your passion and your excitement for what you do is so good. Like it's, it's really nice to come into something. <laughs> where people are excited and genuinely excited about talking about what they do. Cause sometimes you walk into the TTRPG space where I come from and it's a bit like on fire. Like everybody like hates each other because of TTRPG discourse circles and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, yeah. It's it, like, so to come into somewhere like this is so refreshing. Thank you. Well, I tend to be kind of calm and sometimes a little monotone. So I'm glad it sounds like I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, j Ro, if you could, one last time, who are you, what do you do, and where can we find you on the internet, my friend? So I am on Twitter at Coach underscore J underscore R-O, uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash on Summon Skull, uh, on YouTube at bit.ly backslash on Summon Skull, uh, <clears throat> I uh, write a weekly column for EDA Trek. Um, the column is currently called uh, <clears throat> Why did I drop that? Uh, so it's currently called The Latest Hotness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I previously had a, a column called These Cards Do Work. Um and there is a lot of it. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I run the Skull Symbol uh, Discord, which is where people find uh, 
a lot of people find games. Nice. <laughs> and you're just everywhere. You're everywhere. Like you're you're in all the pies. Like so. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much, J Ro. And for those of you listening, whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you are, I hope you're safe. I hope you're well. And I hope that you manage to find success in whatever it is you've decided to do today, tomorrow, the next day, next week, next month, next year. Be happy, my friends. And I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>